Hey, it's Karina, your virtual health coach, and thank you so much for joining me today for the first video in my Sweet Tooth series. So in this series of videos, I'm gonna talk about some of the worst and best sweeteners out there. And in the future videos of this series, I'm gonna share with you some of my favorite healthy dessert recipes, like my apple pie smoothie and Reese's peanut butter ice cream. So before we embark on some of the ways that we can implement some of our healthy sweeteners, I just wanted to go over some of the worst sweeteners out there and just give you a kind of rundown on some of the different sweeteners and artificial sweeteners that you're gonna come across and my personal feelings as a holistic health coach on these different sweeteners. So before we get started, drop me a little comment down below. Let me know your favorite sweet, your favorite dessert, or your favorite type of candy. And I would love to design a healthy recipe version of your favorite dessert. So when it comes to sweeteners, it's important to recognize that we have a couple of different factors we're considering when we're trying to think about which sweetener we want to choose. For people who are on a strict ketogenic diet, who are really trying to keep their carbs low, keep their sugar super low, their considerations are gonna be things like, does this sweetener affect my glucose level? Does this sweetener affect my ketone level or take me out of ketosis? And in that regard, I see that as kind of a different factor than what I'm primarily concerned with. So I'm primarily concerned with the health effects and health benefits potentially of the sweetener we're choosing. And the reason that I'm just kind of setting this out is that a lot of times in the keto world, you will see these non-nutritive artificial sweeteners kind of promoted as a keto safe way to satisfy a sweet tooth. And while it is true that these non-nutritive sweeteners tend to have no or minimal effect on your blood sugar levels, in my opinion, these guys are the worst of the worst in terms of how they affect our health and how they support the functioning or not very good functioning of our body. So when it comes to the health detriments of artificial sweeteners, there is a lot of different information out there and kind of a lot of different conflicting information out there. So because these are pretty new sweeteners, there's not as much research done on them as there might be for things that have been around for a lot longer. So that's one consideration. Another consideration is that a lot of times when they're doing studies on these sweeteners, the people that they're using in their study are pretty unhealthy. So it's important to just kind of recognize that if you are a healthy person with a mostly healthy diet, uh, the effects of these sweeteners will be a little bit different for you than somebody who's eating a lot of junk food and a lot of processed food, and they happen to also be eating a lot of these artificial sweeteners. So you've probably heard things like artificial sweeteners kill brain cells. Artificial sweeteners are bad for your gut bacteria. And in my personal opinion, I, it, once I see information like that, and even if that study is done on, uh, most of these studies, they typically do them on animals or on rodents or rats. And sometimes people will say, oh, well, it was done on rats. So that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna have the same effect on humans. But if it causes cancer in rats, then to me, that's enough of a signal that I don't wanna eat that thing. Because these sweeteners are so pervasive and you're gonna find them in tons and tons of products if you start reading your ingredient labels, it can be a little bit tricky to avoid them. So recognize that maybe the healthiest way to go is actually just preparing your own healthy desserts at home. And that's where the rest of my series comes in, teaching you how to do that. But bottom line here is that when you see these bad boys, I highly recommend you avoid them. So we have aspartame on this list, but the food companies started realizing that people were trying to avoid aspartame. And what you'll see is that there's actually not as much aspartame used nowadays. You won't see it as often, but what you will see are it's it's twins <laughs> it's basically the same chemical by a different name so sucralose 
Um, and I just wanna point out that sucrose, when you see that, is just sugar. But when you see sucralose, that's the artificial sweetener. That's the big bad guy. And then this one I'm seeing more and more often, acesulfame potassium or acesulfame K. These guys are the worst in my book. And I would also throw saccharin in there as well. So here is another non-nutritive artificial sweetener. Um, saccharin, once again, there's all of this kind of different data, different research findings, um, but there have been different issues associated with saccharin and in mice, uh, it is known to give them endocrine or hormone balancing disorders where they're actually not able to produce hormones normally. Um, so as soon as I see something like that, again, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm gonna not eat that thing. I don't wanna chance it myself. So then coming down this list, next up we have corn syrup and high fructose corn syrup. And I just wanna point out that this corn syrup is also sugar, doesn't count as a vegetable. And sometimes you'll also see things like corn syrup solids and other corn syrup derivatives on a label and just recognize that all of those are sugar and they should be considered just the same as sugar, no better. Now, once we get down into sugar itself, you'll see that I've actually put sugar, <laughs> it's actually not as bad as the artificial sweeteners in my opinion. But sugar still is a highly refined substance and can have a lot of negative health effects. So for a moment, let's just touch on sugar and why it's so bad for us anyways. Because some people will argue that, hey, sugar, it comes from the sugar cane or it comes from the sugar beet. It comes from a natural plant, so it must be healthy for you, right? So here's where we get into this concept of refining foods. And I've said this before, but I just think it's a really perfect example. This is the same thing that they do to cocaine, right? So you have a leaf that grows naturally, the coca leaf. And for a long time, people would just chew on a coca leaf. And they did the same thing with sugar cane in a lot of cultures. But when you start to take the coca leaf or the sugar cane in this particular instance, and you isolate out the sweet part, removing all of the fibrous parts of the plant, removing any nutritive parts of the plant, and just isolating down the um, fructose and glucose that give us that sweetness feeling, that trigger that sensation of sweetness. Now we have a highly refined, highly processed substance. And in the same way that chewing on a coca leaf wouldn't be as harmful for you as doing cocaine, uh, we have the same thing here. So if you're actually just taking a sugar cane and chewing on it, it wouldn't be nearly as harmful for you as having this highly refined version of that sugar plant. So continuing this idea of refining down the really sweet parts, we have maltodextrin which is so common, you see it everywhere. And I think a lot of us don't necessarily realize, oh, hey, that's the same thing as sugar, right? Because when they're making the ingredient label, they kind of know that maybe you're gonna just look at the word sugar or the word high fructose corn syrup. So this is just kind of an example of one of these hidden sweeteners that you'll find really, really often in different things. And it's also added to a lot of the other sweeteners. So if you think about Splenda, for instance, which contains these artificial sweeteners, it's also about like 90% maltodextrin or maybe higher than that. So just recognize that the different kind of additives to some of these sweeteners are sometimes just as bad for you as sugar. And you really kind of need to be either reading ingredient labels or just trying to avoid these kind of crazy sweeteners altogether. So now we get to the agave syrup or agave nectar. And here again, we have a sweetener that's derived from a plant. So doesn't that mean it should be healthy? Now, I have this at the bottom of my worst list because I do feel that agave syrup is not as bad as these other sweeteners. And if you have the choice between choosing agave syrup over some of these other sweeteners, it is a good idea. But agave syrup is, again, a very highly refined version of the plant. 
And once we start to refine it, it actually can have an even higher fructose content than sugar itself. So agave syrup is about 85% fructose. And fructose is the component of sugar that makes it harmful for us. So if you're trying to avoid the harmful effects of sugar, unfortunately, agave syrup is not really doing you any favors. However, I would just point out that in general, agave syrup is less likely to be genetically modified than your corn syrup or even your regular sugar. So I'm gonna save my best sweeteners for part two in this series. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you click the bell. But before we close today, I just wanna kind of drive home this concept that when we eat different foods, our body is gonna have a different response or different ease of digesting different things. So when you eat a food that does come from a natural source, so taking agave syrup again, I do feel that that is going to be easier on your body to digest and just to know what to do with in the first place compared to some of these crazy, highly processed chemical sweeteners. I also would just point out that a lot of times these artificial sweeteners are being used in products that in and of themselves are already bad for you. So sometimes we kind of may perpetuate on the sweetener or the sweetener that's in it, but you need to recognize that if you're eating things with a lot of white bread, a lot of pastry, a lot of donuts, for example, then the sugar that's contained in the product is really just part of the problem, part of the ill health effects that you're getting from that really unhealthy food. Whereas if we are taking these different sweeteners and then using them in our own healthy desserts, they're not gonna be nearly as harmful for you as when you consume them in some of the you know, really highly processed candies and snacks that you will find in the grocery store. I also just wanna point out that because these are highly processed chemicals in highly processed foods, that there's a lot of factory manufacturing and processing that goes into them. And in that process alone can start to create negative byproducts, can start to contaminate things with heavy metals. And just in general, the farther that we take something from its natural state, the least healthy it is, the least able your body is to break that thing down and dispose of it the way that it needs to. So I hope this was helpful for you. If I did anything, I hope that you'll just start looking out for these guys and doing your best to avoid them. I will probably do a whole video where I just line up a bunch of surprising foods that contain artificial sweeteners. Cause I know for myself, I will pick up something that looks like it's healthy, read the ingredients, and I'm just amazed at how many different foods contain these things. So if you are choosing from this list, agave syrup would be my pick, but be sure to check out my next video where I'm gonna talk about the healthy sweetener alternatives. Many of our subscribers don't see our videos. Make sure that you click the notification bell. And if you haven't already, follow us on social media for tips, tutorials, giveaways, and daily inspiration.